Okay, so on this question, this is kind of an interesting and unique question. Let me um, bring it down here for us. It's x over 2x. Oh, you know, actually, first step here. Yeah, let me get off the plan here. So fractions, and we have fractions with an equal sign. What are we supposed to do with this? Step number one is to factor any denominators. We got to find a common denominator. So that means we got to start by factoring denominators. So right here, 2x minus 4, that can actually be factored. I don't know if you noticed that. Take out a 2, right? See how 2 times x and 2 times 2 would go back to 2x minus 4? So that's actually the first step. Okay, let me get a little more space here. Minus, minus 6 equals one over x minus two. All right, so the first step is to, here, I probably, <laughs> probably space that out too much. Let me try again. Minus six equals one over x minus two. Okay, that's the first step. Second step is to multiply all the terms, left and right, by the LCD over one. And what is the LCD? One of each type of item under the bar. No repeats. Remember, we cannot repeat items down there. So, okay. So what is that? It, well, what do we have under the bar? We have a two and an X minus two and an X minus two. So I'm just gonna take a single two and an X minus two and um, that'll be what goes under the bar. So here we go. 2 x minus 2 over 1. 2 x minus 2 over 1. 2 x minus 2 over 1. Right? All the terms left and right. Bring that in. Okay. All the terms. There we go. All the terms left side and right side of the equal sign. And then, you know, the next step, right? Step 3. Cancel all denoms. So I'm going to cancel 2 and x minus 2. And what does that leave? Just x minus. What happens here? 6 times 2 is 12 x minus 2, right? So 6 times 2. And then here, cancel the x minus 2s, and we just have 1 times 2, or just 2. So then I'm going to distribute this minus 12, minus 12 x plus 24, one times two is just two. Is that, is that making sense what happened right there? Negative 12 times negative two made plus 24. And then step four, solve for x. These x's on the same side, this is one x minus 12 x is minus 11 x. And um, keep going. Subtract 24 on both sides. And we get minus 11x. And this is minus 22. Last step, you know, is to divide. And so what do we get? We get x is positive 2 because two negatives make a positive. So we solve for x. And then normally, we just go, boom. OK, that's our answer. We did a great job. x is 2. This one has a special wrinkle. What is that? Well, remember, remember, well, that's because you might, it might have struck you from the beginning. What's this whole thing about does it have an answer? You know, what do you, what do you mean does it have an answer? How do you, yeah, we just got an answer. The answer is two. No, that's actually a faulty answer. Now, what do I mean? Well, this is a weird one. And I just want to show you this one time. Um, honestly, I'm, 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 I'm not going to put this on the exam. But this, if you're going higher in math and science, this is something that comes up. So I just want you to see it and um, just to be have a little exposure. Um, that is, remember what an answer, a solution to an equation is supposed to, like, like for example, let, let, let me just give you a simple, let me just remind you, we can kind of lose force for truth. If I go x minus 3 equals um, 4, what's the answer? You can, even, you can tell the, this one just by looking. It's 7, huh? What number take away three as well? Well, seven, right? Seven is clearly the answer. And we could, we could do the formalities, you know, add three to both sides, 
from omega to seven. But remember, I want to make sure you could, what, what is an answer? An answer is something you could plug in for X that will make the equation true, right? Like one number take away three is four. Well, seven, seven take away three is four. Seven is the number we could plug in and make it true, right? So an answer is something that makes an equation true, right? Right, okay. So does two really make the equation true? We take that two back up to the beginning equation and we put in the two for X there, there, and there. Here's what I wanna focus your attention on. This right side is one over two minus two. That's one over zero, what's that? If you do it on your calculator, it's air. It's actually infinity. The calculator doesn't have a way of saying infinity. It's an air. You can't, and this one, by the way, is also zero because two times two is four, four minus four is zero. This one's also two over zero. This one's also air. You can't divide by zero. Do you know that? Why not? Because, because think about what dividing is. What is 10 divided by two? It's five, right? Because two, the bottom goes into the top. Two goes into 10, five times. So how many times does zero go into one? It goes in forever and ever and ever and ever, right? It's infinity. So, okay, so, so what? All right, all right. So it's infinity, it's air on my calculator, whatever. Well, that means that, that two is not really the answer because it did not really make the equation true, right? Remember an answer, if it's really an answer, when plugged in, is supposed to make the equation true. I plug in two there. It's supposed to make the left side and the right side equal, like that simple little equation I gave you just a minute ago, x minus three is four. We know the answer is seven because seven plugged in makes that true. Seven minus three is four. The answer is really seven. So the answer here is not really, to, yeah, but we did it. We did all the steps and I know we did it, but it's wrong. Where did we mess up? We didn't mess up. We, there, there's nothing we did wrong. This equation has no solution. So the answer here is, it does, does this have a solution? No, how do we know? Because I did the steps and got the only solution that could possibly be the solution. But when I plugged it in, I saw it made the bottom zero, which is infinity, which is not a number. So the left side and the right side are not truly equal. So this, this is an equation that has no answer. And I know that probably feels weird to you, but if you go higher in math and science, there are some equations that have no answers. So you don't need to put, don't, don't put in two here. That's not really the answer. Don't put in anything in the second blank. Just say no and submit it. This equation has no answer. Again, I'm not going to test you on this, but I just want you to see it that sometimes an equation has no answer. How do we know? We did our steps, got the only answer possible too, came back up and plugged it in to see if it really works, if it really makes the equation true like any answer should really do. And the right side came out one over zero which is infinity. You can't divide by zero. Zero goes into anything infinite times. It's not the same as zero on the top. Zero over three is just zero, right? Because remember, bottom goes into top. Three goes into zero, zero times. But zero goes into one or any other number infinite times. So that's, that's not true. That's not equal. It's not even a number. So does it have a solution? Therefore, no. This is an equation that has no answer. Here we go.